good. Well, I mean, we've been out for uh, probably three weeks, but not really as a team, kind of small group thing. So last week has been good. Uh, conditions were different, but, you know, nonetheless, we, we still got out and made good use of it. What's the biggest difference maybe this year with, with some of the guys coming in, but still a lot of these guys that are returning? I think the guys that are returning now that have played here for periods of one and two years, I, you know, I'm thinking of the infield, but I'm also thinking about the mound too. There's, we've got a decent amount of guys that have, have been on the mound before. And so I, I think that's really helped the, the younger group. The younger group has blended in pretty well. Uh, they've watched, paid attention, and pretty good from a standpoint of uh, their intentful nature once they get onto the field so I, but I, I i think because it's modeled it with the older group that that helps uh tim you know both carter holton and ryan ginther got back on the mound on sunday what did you see from them and how are they progressing well you saw it too uh, i did so <laughs> you could tell me uh but i i thought they were fine I, it was good to get them back on the mound again holton hadn't pitched since july so it had been some time and then you know ginther Hadn't pitched much either. Uh, he went up and played summer ball for about a week and then came back. So, yeah, it was just good to get them back on the mound because they're, they're talented kids. Is there anybody who has, like, season-ending or long-term injuries at this point besides, you know, R.J. Hamilton? Well, I mean, R.J., I think we'll wait and see on that. I mean, he's, he's very intent on getting back on the field, and he's on the field every day now. Uh, at what point he can be 100% again, I'm not sure. Ethan Robinson will be out. He just had surgery last week, so up to this point, that's it. Have you had anybody, you mentioned a lot of older guys, emerging mm -hmm. speeders throughout the early part of the spring? Sure. I, I think, um, you know, when you're looking at it from a competitive baseball standpoint, that that will probably be identified during the course of the season, but when you think of leadership, you think about really how the group moves and do they move with harmony, do they move with care, do they move with intent, and that has to happen with older kids who can set a tone. But yes, we, we've seen that. You've got two five-year guys, which for us is tough to come by, and then we have uh, three four-year guys. So uh, five seniors or five guys that will be finishing their eligibility this year that's pretty good for Vanderbilt. We, we typically don't get that age group inside of our program. You've had a history of juniors really breaking out after a couple of years in the program. How did, like going back, why is that happen? I mean, why is that happen? I mean, they have two years in the program, but over over your years, you've had a lot of guys that have done that. So what do you credit that, that to? Their confidence, their confidence, their time in the program, their ability to settle into what they're doing. Uh, their ability to have a role and, and stay in it. And then once that starts to happen, they too find their leadership model as well. And I think that's important for them because it empowers them. And once it starts to empower them, that, then their, uh, their confidence just seems to bloom a little bit. I've always thought, you know, from an academic standpoint, at least this is how I've always felt here is, when you start to see that trajectory of academics move forward, the, the play's right behind it. And that's very encouraging, you know, for us right now in terms of the type of fall we had academically and uh, how, how the guys did. Positionally, how competitive is it right now? I mean, you're in, in the spring almost, right? I mean, how, how competitive is it? Or does, or does that even start more in the fall with starting to compete at a lot of these positions where battles will, will happen? It, it starts to happen towards the end of the fall, but it's certainly happening right now. I, I couldn't really, I think, I, I would just say from a, in totality, this is probably, might be the toughest decision-making process in terms of putting guys on the field, just because of the equality that exists between them all. And I'm not going to tell you they're all playing at this high level. That's not the case. But I would say there is a lot of similarities in a lot of kids in terms of, I mean, not similarities in style of play, but similarities in terms of productivity and what they can do on the field. Uh, I think that will that will be difficult, but you know, I, I don't really concern myself with it because if if you get a lot of kids that have the ability to play, then 
hopefully it means good participation. If it's good participation, then it's just a group of guys that are willing to share their toys with each other and play, and that's needed on a healthy ball club. Um, during the scrimmages, both Braden Holcomb and Jack Bolger have started to see more time in the outfield. Is that uh, pl positions where you might use those players more? Yeah, just trying to find other spots for them. You know, DH, you know, not everyone can DH. So you want to find people that have some defensive value too. And if they have offensive value, defense gets you on the field, offense keeps you on it, but you got to find a spot defensively. And Bulge has played left field before in our program. He's done it as a freshman. And, you know, with Espinal and he being two seniors and Poteet being behind that, those two, I mean, you have some depth at that position, which is always good, but at the same time, not all of them can play at one time. So spreading them out a little bit helps us. Um, as far as the transfers go, mm -hmm. how do you see them fitting into the program, and do you think that they've made improvements after the fall? Very good. Uh, we've had some history with all of them, so that always helps. Um, but I would say their blending abilities have been really good. They're all very personable kids, and I hate to use coach, but they're team first guys. They really are. They think that way. They've, they've been raised that way. And we probably wouldn't have taken them in had they not been that way. But uh, they've all improved. I, I look at Jaden, um, certainly Humphrey, you know, his ability in the outfield. And then the two other guys on the mound, Sawyer and uh, Huseman, have or they've stepped in and, and competed pretty well. In terms of getting back to where you guys want to be in the postseason, how do you install that, especially with some of the newer guys at such an early point in the season, and just begin working toward it? Well, I think it, it's, it's just working towards it, really. It, it, you know, you create a visual for the players in terms of what it potentially can look like, but it really, it, it all comes down. There, there's a reason why teams don't get to a super regional. There's a reason why teams don't even get to a regional. And to identify that, and then understand, yeah, that's a past experience, but at the same time, you can use those experiences moving forward. So uh, I think our kids are pretty savvy to what the potential of the group is, but you know, there, there's a lot of days between now and then, and really all you can do is just get better right now. That's, that's the main focus. What would you like to see from a guy like RJ Austin, who obviously has played some really good baseball, but mm -hmm. probably a next step here as, as he moves up? I think that'll happen naturally for him. He started to do that in the Cape in this summer, which is always a good sign. But you can even see the difference in 12 months with him last year versus right now. And, and to last year, a little bit to his defense, we, we didn't really know where he was going to play. We had him everywhere, and, and we kind of do right now. But I think I'd, I love his potential in the infield, and, but I love what he can do in the outfield too. So it, it'll probably lean more towards where he can play that will help better our lineup and get someone else in the lineup. Still a little time to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. There's some Austin Martin in him in terms of the player, the style of player. There's a lot of things that he can do, and uh, he's a good player. What's the benefit of having a guy like Maldonado and even McIlvain who have had older brothers come through, come through the program? I don't know if it's a benefit if you're in that <laughs> locker room. Sometimes they are, they get a hard time. Yeah, you're not as good as your brother. And, and then when their brothers show up, we tell the bro older brothers, your younger brother's better than you are. Um, I think it's all good. I, I do. You know, Mac has been on our campus for a long period of time. I felt like it was Vanderbilt before he was Vanderbilt. We didn't assume he was coming here. Uh, and I'm glad he, he did because he's, he's much different than his brother, and I think that's, that's part of separating him. I don't, I don't speak about his brother at all when he's here. It's his experience, and his brother knows how to release the experience to him, as is the case with Nick Maldonado, and Nick's here all the time training, but Nick never gets in the way of Chris. I mean, that's a, that's a very well-functioning family that knows how to celebrate one another without getting in their way, but uh, I, I, I like that. I like when brothers come back in our program. When you have someone like Ethan McIlvain who has that type of stuff as a freshman, what sort of role could he, or impact could he have? Well, I think the main thing is just getting him on the mound in any role. We don't really want to pigeonhole him or put parameters around anything that he does. I mean, we've seen kids like him before and 
you know, I'm, I'm not saying they're the same kid, but you look at a guy like Carson Fulmer, it was a power arm, and we used him kind of as a reliever early, but then the next thing you know, he, he blossomed into a starter. I think Ethan has those abilities at some point in time, but I, I think it's just keeping him healthy, not allowing him to do too much. Um, guys like him with heavy engines and intense uh, can sometimes get in the way of themselves because they, they want to do a lot. So you're trying to save them from themselves sometimes. When you have guys like Bryce Cunningham and Grayson Carter pitched in a lot of different roles in the past, but maybe not always had the results, you know, how, what have you seen from them in the, or the early going, and what do you think that their experience could do? Well, their experience will help us. You know, what they've done in the past no longer matters. So, it, it, again, it's, it's just how they utilize those experiences and help them going forward. I thought Bryce had an excellent summer. Um, he won another championship, which there's always value to kids that are on winning teams. And he had a good fall for us, and he, he worked hard on his body. I mean, he spent a lot of time on the sled. He spent a lot of time in the weight room. He's really challenged himself, which I appreciate. He's a Dean's List student. I mean, he first came in here, you know, there were some growing pains with him, uh, which are natural, but I, I just love the, the potential of him. And then, um, who was, oh, Grayson. You know, Grayson's, you know, he's one of the better stories in our program in terms of, I, I still don't know how you put on 50 pounds being a vegetarian. You, know? <laughs> you got to eat some meat somewhere, but it doesn't. Uh, but in terms of size and strength and fitness level and um, getting the ball to the plate better now in smaller areas, he, he's improved as well. He just needs time on the field against competition. You mentioned having older brothers in the program. Yep. There's been a lot of guys who returned, like Hunter Owens here in the fall, and Ricky Bradfield was up there watching the Wake Forest scrimmage. What's it meant to have guys like that? It's always a gift. I, I do not assume they're coming back, but to have them back, to have those weddings around here, to see a lot of people, I mean, that's, you know, we built it in ter years ago in, in hopes that that would be the case. But the fact that you can see 30 bodies out here in the morning, every morning uh, before we start is very encouraging. And it's a library of information for the boys too. I, I think sometimes at that young age, and the older guys were this way too when they were young, is they're not intimidated but a little bit shy to ask a question where I know those guys and would spend any amount of time with our kids and help them out. But that's, uh, that's certainly a gift for us. What type of impact do you think Cam Kojal could have on the team this year? Well, he's not scared when he gets in the batter's box. I mean, he's, you know, short arm left handed hitters have always had value, um, whether it's college or pro. And he's, he's that. He's a guy that can, can hit. Um, and he likes to hit. And he spends a lot of time at it. But he spends a lot of time at the other parts of the game, too. But uh, we'll see. He, he uh, you know, we've got him hitting in the middle of an order in scrimmages. So. We, you know, we value what he potentially can do. So, like everyone, just getting better. Have you seen another comparison, maybe a freshman in the past with as much raw power as Brayden Holcomb? Freshman? Yeah, freshman coming in. I think Pedro. You know, Pedro. I think Pedro had not no slight on Brayden, but Pedro had as much power as anyone I've ever seen at that age. I mean, he made this ballpark look very, very small. It was tremendous <laughs> bat speed. But you asked about Braden, and Braden has, you know, he's got those abilities. He's strong, and he's fast. It's, it's unique when you've got a kid that you could play first, third, any, you know, I, I threw him out in center field the other day because he moves well, and he's actually moves well in the outfield. He's, uh, you know, he played center field in high school. He played shortstop in high school. He played football. He played basketball. Those athletes are tough to come by. You know, they've got awareness skills because of their other athletic experiences, which is very helpful once they get on the baseball field. He's, he's that kid, too. I like him a lot. He's got thick skin. He, you can coach him. You can coach all our kids, but you, you really coach Braden. Braden. Braden wants to know. Braden wants to know. He wants to figure it out, and I like that piece of him. What do you think the, the high leverage relief or closer situation might be shaping up to be early on? Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know. Uh, I, I think we probably would have four or five guys that potentially could sit in that role. It, it, it might be the guys that don't necessarily start. So uh, I think we're a ways away from that. Uh, the, the issue with playing February 16th and 17th is that it rushes some decisions, at least in that moment. 
and those might not be the decisions you make long term, but you got to make them because someone's got to do it. So we'll just uh, that'll be pretty fluid. What has Bro Coleman added to, to the team? Size. <laughs> uh, everything. I mean, he's he. I say size. Size of his heart. I mean, that that kid's here all the time. I mean, he's here early in the morning. He's here late. Um, he just wants to be around the players. He wants to learn. Uh, he helps tremendously in the office. Um, it's like having a son back. It really is. I mean, Maggie and I have been very fond of him. He before he came in here his freshman year. He came to summer school and spent the majority of the time with my wife and I, and we were out here with him every day. Uh, but he's in our program a long period of time. And we went to a staff meeting the other day, and all the newcomers had to stand up and introduce themselves. And when he introduced himself, he says, my name is Ro Coleman. I played at such and such a period of time. And he goes, I'm glad to be home. So it's like, you know how he feels about this place and how everyone feels about him. Oh, identity would be, I, I just think intentful. I, I just think they're, they're pretty, pretty focused when they get in the training environment. Uh, they take ownership of it. Uh, they have fun, but they, they're pretty steady. They're pretty steady and consistent. I would say it kind of mimics what they are edu from an educational standpoint. Uh, what the identity looks like once we get on the field, I don't know yet. I don't know what that offensive, offensive piece will look like. Um, nor do I un really understand what the pitching is going to look like yet. But I think we're just trying to formulate positions. Once we get them on the field, then I think we'll create an identity on, based on who's out there and how they play together. You mentioned Volko. Matt Osterford also seems to have some real raw power. What's mm -hmm. the next step for him in his development? Consistency. He loves to hit. And he, he loves to be on the field. So just just play. He's just a young kid, just needs more time in the oven. He, and that's, you know, it really, really is that. It's just getting more reps for a kid like him. Coach, what have you seen out of Devin Futrell so far through the summer and now leading up to the season? Where do you see him landing in your rotation pitching and contributing to this team? Well, he'll contribute. Um, he's gotten stronger. His fitness level has gotten better. Really, those are the areas that we talked about before he left last year. Uh, and then he just taking his pitch assortment and just making it better. Uh, he's a command guy, he pitches, very competitive kid, naturally competitive, kind of quiet, on the, more on the quiet side. But you, you love when he's out there. He's pitching some big games for us, but no expectations of Devin. I just want him to continue to get better. Well, thanks for coming Thank out.